Hi everyone and welcome to And So On. My name is Lisa and today I have two projects to show you as well as the winners of my giveaway. Okay, so I wanted to show you my progress on the plans that I made and that I showed you the other day. So what I'm wearing is the Elizabeth Suzanne Georgia T. So I'll put in a few photos, but um, this is in white linen that I got as a gift from Michelle from Simone's Rose. I bought some of her fabric off cuts and um, she threw this in for free. So um, this is my first try. So I really, really like it. I used a combination of tutorials because there's no um, instructions. Not that I couldn't have figured it out, but I just like to watch the tutorials. One by Sewing Therapy and one by Stitch Collective, and I'll put those links below. Um, I've already managed to get makeup on it just this morning naturally I'm wearing a little white tank top underneath because as you can see white linen is very see-through however I'm really happy with it um, I am hoping that as it gets washed and worn it gets a teeny bit drapier um, it's, it's a little bit boxy but overall I'm very happy I also managed to get uh, oh, I don't even know how many yards of bias binding out of this and so I used the bias binding tutorial where you take a square and make one continuous loop of bias binding with one seam two seams I guess two seams so I'll put that link in there as well um, and that's what I used for the neckline here and I think this is the flattest I've managed to get a neckline one thing I did when I finished when I finished sewing it I ended up it was like pitching forward which is what happens to me all the time it makes me nuts anyway I put it on the ironing board and I I gave it a good press and then we were going out to lunch and I actually put a magazine on top of it to give it some weight um, as it was cooling slash drying so that seems to have worked because it's not doing that at all I do find this neck hole a little small actually um, hence the makeup on it so I don't know if that's because of how I did the bias binding um, now I do like the neckline a lot. I don't know, maybe I might cheat it down a teeny bit the next time I make it. I will be making another for sure, um, but yeah. Okay, so the other thing I'm super proud of, and it's my hack of the Audi play suit. So if you remember, I made the Audi play suit and I decided to hack it using some beautiful orange blossom linen viscose from Minerva. So I did take some footage as I was working, so here that is. Happy Saturday morning. Uh, I have a wee update and I basically finished the bodice yesterday on the Audi play suit and I'll put a picture in. Um, it's very cute. I love putting together that bodice because it's almost like creating a jigsaw puzzle of pretty. You get to look at it and go, where do I want this to go? Where do you want that to go? And I was trying to kind of create a, a cluster of the pattern, but slightly asymmetrical. So I really love it. And then I worked to put the, the pattern where I want it on the skirt and then also figure out the skirt. So after going back and forth, I think I've decided to adjust the, the pattern for the Audi play suit culottes into a skirt. So let me show you what I'm doing. Okay, so I took the shorts front and I folded out the crotch like this and I put it down and I traced around it. Now, of course, this has seam allowance, so if you just wanted to do it exactly like the front, you would take that seam allowance out when you flip it. But for me, I'm actually not gonna do the darts. I wanna gather the front, so I don't mind a little bit of extra fullness. And then I flipped it over and did the same thing. And then for the back, and then again, I've done the same thing with the back. So this angles out more. And so again, if you wanted to use those darts and keep it the same, you would probably want to bring this line in, but I want the skirt to be a little bit fuller. So I've kept that fullness. As a matter of fact, I might even increase it a little bit. Um, and obviously I'm gonna have to lengthen it, but this allows me to use the, the pocket pattern that comes with this pattern and also just keep the kind of a similar silhouette. Again, I'm going to gather this back and I think I'm going to add a waistband and an elastic back, I think. We shall see. Okay, so I've already adjusted a little bit. I have cut the front panel that I created in half and I've spread it by about, what, five inches or something like that um, because I've decided I want more gathers at the front. So let me show you. So you can see here, I've 
split this by a chunk so that, and this is where the pocket will be. And I've done that so that I can get the whole panel in. I wanted to kind of get it asymmetrical. I don't think that's gonna work out um, because I still want, if I feel like if I gather it too much, then you're not gonna see the print. So I'm doing this and then I'm gonna lengthen it down and then I'm gonna decide whether or not I wanna add a waistband. So in the end, I used just a big rectangle for the back because I wanted it to be gathered. And then I drafted a waistband and attached that and put an elastic. And then over here, I again drafted a front flat waistband because I wanted that to be flat. And I've attached it to the bodice, finished the bodice. And then this front skirt is the same as what I showed you previously. It's gathered basically, I've basically gathered it from like two inches, maybe three inches, including this pocket here. And so it's just gathered in the middle. And the reason why I did that is I really wanted to be able to feature this. And so I didn't want the front to be as gathered as the back. So it'll be a little less. And I really wanted this effect of like, there being kind of pattern here and then pattern down here. I wanted that kind of asymmetry. Okay, first try on in the kids' bathroom. So, so far so good, I think. Um, yeah, still a little gapey here. There's definitely something that I can do almost once it's done. I think I made the strap shorter this time. I think that worked. And I like the little pockets. I think the skirt worked. I'm trying to decide if I want to keep it midi length or if I want to make it more like knee length. Although, although, except that almost everything I have is knee length. So it might be nice to have something a little midi. Just give it a little hem. Yeah, anyway, I'm happy with this. I'm not so happy with that. I'm not so happy with that, but I'm happy with this. So two out of three ain't bad. Okay, so I think I've killed two birds with one stone. So number one, I did not like this bit of white showing. And number two, it was still gaping a bit at the side. So I find that if I just blues it just a teeniest bit, it gets rid of that. Ow, ow. And it gets rid of that. So I'm gonna tack this. I don't think I'm gonna, I don't think I'm gonna sew it down all the way. I think I'm just gonna tack it and then tack it. And I think by tacking it down, that will kill two birds with one stone. I also and I'm gonna keep it long. I'm trying to decide if I want to do a skinny hem or if I want to hand finish the hem, which in a linen viscose might be really nice. Okay, so I just did a try on of Lily's dress and it's looking great and she's really happy, so that's nice. I've tacked down that little bit of that sort of front lip of the, um, of the bodice and I like that. And now I've decided to hand hem the dress with a rolled hem because I find doing it very zen. It's got like a... I don't know, a very zen yoga medita meditative quality is what I'm looking for. And so I'm gonna sit out here with the parrots um, and my palm trees. And there's a cactus back there that I didn't even notice earlier. So I'm gonna sit back here and my coffee um, and watch some sewing videos like maybe you guys do when you're sewing and hand roll the edge um, before we go out to dinner tonight. But then I already have a calculator, I already have highlighters, pens, pencils. You might need a, um, a protractor and all that. Yes. Math set. Yeah, I lost my protractor, so I think I'm going to need another protractor. Because I accidentally lost mine. Well, of course it was accident. Yeah, last year we didn't get to protracting, but it's also possible that that's just because we were going to do that during the quarantine or something, and it's a, kind of a hard subject to do over the computer.
and ta-da, here she is. So I'm really happy with how this turned out. It's not perfect, nothing's ever perfect, but it's, it's pretty good, I'm pretty happy with it. Um, a couple of details, so like I said, this bodice doesn't fit super, super close to the body. Um, and I actually, because I don't have a printer right now, I didn't print off the final pattern pieces after Amy Nicole had taken some of the ease out of the back. So it does kind of um, blues out a little bit as you saw in the video. And so on, honestly, all I did was I tacked it down on the sides and when I wear it, it kind of like folds over. Wait, let me show you the pictures first. My Lily Bell took these pictures for me and um, they turned out really well. This is so soft and comfortable to wear. This, this viscose, it, uh, viscose linen blend is really soft and lovely. I was a little bit worried because I'm not wearing a bra underneath that it might be scratchy against my skin, but it is not at all scratchy. This is fully lined, so it's, it's enough um, coverage for me. And it was fun because I actually cut two bodices and then decided which one I liked. And I liked putting the flower in the back. Like I said, I didn't like this, but when I wear it, you'll notice that the way it blueses down, it kind of disappears, so I can live with it. Um, and then, of course, my husband was like, aren't the oranges right in front of your lady bits? I mean, I don't think it's a big deal. I don't think it's noticeable. It's a gathered skirt. I mean, if you really wanted to, you could pick out any dress off the rack that has a pattern and, and show where maybe something is featured on something. I've just decided not to even to think about it. So uh, mostly it's honestly about this, right? And I really worked hard to place the patterns in it, like sort of offset them so that the eye would kind of go from one place to another. And then on the back, my elastic waistband turned out perfectly. I really like this chunky waistband. Um, I love the gathers. I, I'm really proud of how, of how I figured this out. Um, and then I ended up doing, so this pattern has a button loop and a button and I actually wanted, I, I think probably I should size down in this pattern to be totally honest. I think I made an eight and I should probably make a six, but eight is what I had uh, printed off. And so instead I put a buttonhole and then put the button where it needs to go. And you'll see, you'll see here that I ended up folding over a good inch of the back to make it um, snug enough for me. So this little button is actually, you know, one of those little buttons that comes in the baggie when you buy uh, a top, so it was like a top of lilies. It has a tiny little button and this was the extra. And I thought, oh, a little gold button would be nice. Anyway, very, very happy with this. I have probably almost a meter left, maybe. So this probably took about two meters and the girls both love it. And so I'm gonna figure out a way to get them each something out of it. I don't know what yet. In terms of the rest of the plans, um, like I said, I'm going back and forth on whether to use, let me show you. So I was gonna use the Alessia dress, the backless dress on this. I don't know if you guys are on, if you've seen on Instagram, but someone did a maxi version of the Cali shirt dress with a belt and I'll put her name and the picture in there. <sighs> I love that. That is so up my alley. I would wear that nonstop. It's so beautiful. So I don't know. And then same with the blue and white I was gonna do in the Cali and I think, I think I've think i kind of fallen off that as well. Um, yeah, so what's gonna happen with the rest of the plans, I don't know. I'm gonna cut something else today, I don't know what yet, but it's always changing. Okay, and so the giveaway winners, I used the randomcommentpicker.com um, to choose five winners at random. So I'm gonna put them here because I don't remember the names off the top of my head. If you are one of the winners, please contact me either on Instagram or by email, I'll put it below, with your email address and I will get that sent off to you. Congratulations to all the winners. I did record another video for my other channel. If you would like to see that, it's five reasons why we moved from Canada to Spain. And I've got a lot of really interesting comments on it so far. So if you'd like to watch that, I will put that in the comments below or I'll put it up here. And yeah, all right, I have some stuff to get done today, so I'm gonna go. But I hope wherever you are, the sun is shining and you are sewing. I'll talk to you soon, bye-bye.